a real Bible lesson as in studying out a book. But uh, the topic is uh, freedom in Christ. Actually, the title is freedom for what? Okay? So I, I, I just want to talk a little bit about freedom in Christ. Now, I'm going to start by just throwing out asking you all a question here. Um, you know, we're, we're in America, we think freedom is like the best thing ever, right? Mm. So the question is, what's good about freedom? What's so good about freedom? Yeah. <clears throat> you get to do what you want. Okay, that's the <laughs> definition of freedom. That's the definition of freedom, all right? But what's good about it? Yeah. You get choices. Uh, choices, all right? That's the definition of freedom. Yeah, it's funny. You have one of those. And it's interesting, if we assume that the definition of freedom is what's good about freedom, but I, I want us to think a little bit more deeply than that, okay? I mean, we, it's like we assume this is the greatest thing ever, but why is it so great? All right, go ahead. I'll take the words you're going to Okay, good. Definition of freedom, again. Okay, all right, good, yeah. Makes you happy. Okay, I think that I think that's actually kind of zeroing in a little bit better. I, I, all the answers are good, by the way. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher, and officially, all answers are good. <laughs> Some people say there's no such thing as a stupid question. Now that's not true. That's not true. Right. But there's no stupid answers. You see, there's not. That's not a good thing. Anyway, any other thoughts? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh yes. Well. I get to enjoy it, and I didn't have to die for it. Okay, good. We get to enjoy it. So there's some kind of enjoyment that comes from freedom, and an extra kind of joy. But why is that? Yeah, go ahead. It allows you to explore everything that you could be your highest potential. Right, right. Good, yeah. I was going to say, like, Karen, I think God created us to be free, and when we're unshackled, we can reach, you know, right. heights that we can't before. Right, and I, I think... If we do things because we have to, there's there's no joy in that. Mm. You know, and, and to me, the the, uh, 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 the, the answers, every single answer was kind of increasing a little. That's really great. It, it, to, the, the the advantage of freedom is that, is what you do with that freedom. It's because if you freely commit to doing something, a great sacrifice, and a great result comes from that. That is incredibly satisfying. And, and God can relate to that. Because he made a, a great sacrifice of his own free will. And he and that's where he gets his joy and his pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing we might have some Braveheart fans out there. Come on. Yeah. 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 Man, I love that line. He says, freedom! You know, and of course, we guys are like, yeah. In America, freedom is like, kind of almost like a religion, you know? Right. But again, it kind of begs the question. So, so what did you do with your freedom? You know, right. you know, I, I think because being at UConn, it kind of brought back some memories. All right, and uh, some, you know, my, I was hanging out with my old college buddies last night, and we were talking about. Well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we kind of got kicked off. We were kind of the the infamous dudes on campus, and uh, you know, yeah. You know, but I, I remember. You know, when I when I was going through high school, I thought, oh, when I go to college, I am free. And I remember getting out there and college, you know, I could do anything I wanted. I remember when my our, our oldest went off to college and we kind of drove him up to where he's living there, he's living in an apartment. And I said to him as I went off, Ben, tonight, do whatever you want. And whatever it is, don't even tell me about it. You know, whatever. And my son's like, Okay, Dad. <laughs> You know, got, you know, freedom. But and I think, well, what did I do with my freedom? I did some really stupid, stupid things. Right. Galatians 5 1. If we use our freedom to serve, if we give ourselves to something worthwhile because we choose to do that, great pleasure comes from that. And that's how God intended it to be. I remember the first time I traveled to Africa, I, I, called the, I got the contact information with Chris Obanaya. And he, he didn't know me at all. And I, I, I sent him an email. I said, Chris, 
I, I want to come to Africa and just serve the church there, and, you know, I would just want to come for free. And it's like, you know, that didn't happen. You know? That's not something that people did. It, but, uh, you know, everywhere that I go, especially in that kind of setting, I get the greatest blessing more than anybody else. Are you kidding? Wow. The blessings just come pouring down. Ephesians 2. Again, this is a reminder of our freedom in Christ. Ephesians 2.10. All right, let's go back to verse 8. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. Can I get an amen, amen. on that? Amen. 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 We're, we're free. Like I said, you don't have to share your faith. I, I'm not kidding. You don't have to give on Sunday. Well, I, yeah, I think I actually do have to. I think there's a commandment there. Okay, you have, all right, you have to give on Sunday. Right. I'll concede. All right? But it says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good work. So we're not saved by works, but you know what? We're saved to do good work. Mm -hmm. right. mm. And you know what? You're not going to be happy. Unless you are giving your life as a minister of the Amen. gospel, Amen. you will not have joy in your life. Right. Amen. So what, what is your ministry? Uh, here, here's how I see it. My ministry is to use the gift that, that God has given me. That's my ministry. So, you know, we have, I don't know, 60 people, 70 people in here, 70 different ministers, 70 different ministries. Amen. Unless a couple of you have a different, happen to have the same gift. So, uh, the, I believe the work that God gave us to do is to use the gift that he gave us. There's, there's a line from a movie. Now, this is a really, really old movie. So, if you remember this, that means you're also old, too. <laughs> Chariots of the Gods, I think. Remember the, the thing with the runner guy? Chariots of Fire. Chariots of Fire. Chariots of the Gods. <laughs> oh, that's, that's that weird thing. Uh, uh, Hal Lindsey. Or something. Uh, All right. Chariots of Fire. And remember that line where he says, when I run, I feel God's pleasure. For me, when I'm teaching the Bible, when yeah. I'm teaching... I feel God's pleasure. Amen. Yes. Maybe for you, when I'm fixing cars, I feel God's pleasure. Come on. You know what that means? Your gift is fixing cars. Right. You know what you should do? You should have the car fixing ministry. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I'm serious. It's true. It's Which true. gift is more important in God's kingdom, the teaching gift or the car fixing gift? Mm. I say it's exactly equal. Yep. Mm. One might be seen more than another, but who cares? In God's eyes, what's the difference? That's right. Imagine sure. this. You, you, you devote yourself for the rest of your life to the car fixing ministry. And you're going to have every Saturday morning free car fixing. Do you think you might get a few visitors to church? Wow. Imagine. That'd be awesome. Right. Of course, for the first year, you'd be fixing all the disciples' cars. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Or maybe your gift you start somewhere. is serving. Well, then, what Peter says is, well, then, serve. Amen. And to me, having a ministry, that's something that you devote to yourself to over a period of time. That's right. You know, maybe your, maybe your gift requires you to go back to school and get some more schooling to do that thing. Maybe it's medical, maybe helping people's physical health, that's your gift. So you need to become a medical missionary. Mm -hmm. I, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. And even if you're a parent with a little ki bunch of little kids around the house, well, what are you going to do 15, 20 years from now when they're out of the house? Mm -hmm. Maybe you could go to Ethiopia and start a clinic. And through that clinic, help hundreds and thousands of people go to heaven. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Amen. So your ministry, to me, the gift is the thing you love to do. It's the thing you do even when they're not watching. You Amen. know what I'm saying? Amen. Yes. Young people, a lot of times they don't know what their gift is. I say, well, just do lots of stuff and you'll bump into it eventually. <laughs> yes. If you're over 30, you know what your gift is. You yes. It might be more than one thing. Right. But that's what God created us to do. Like, like in that movie, he said, when I run, I feel God's pleasure. Mm. There was a time in our church, there were like two gifts that we honored as like, yeah, evangelism and leadership. Yep. Sure. And to some extent, those with other gifts felt somewhat devalued. Yep. You know, we're not, seriously, we're not that way. As a church, we're, we're, that's, that's way behind us. I'm serious. Yep. 
And now, you know, I, I think of one sister in, in San Diego, kind of a fairly reserved sister. She would never seem very happy. She's definitely not, evangelism is definitely not her gift of leadership. Oh, my goodness. Her gift is crafts. And so I, I remember having this conversation with her and her husband, and she decided to start a craft ministry in her neighborhood. And, and every week she has all the ladies over. I, 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 would, I, could, I could imagine going to the city. This would be the t most terrible thing. I, I would hate this. All right. But you know what? She's happy, and she's bringing it to the church. I mean, what's better than that? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, which would be better to put an addition in your house or to put an addition onto the house of God? I mean, Come on. Which, which one's going to fill up those pockets? Mm. You know? Yep. And if you don't give your life, your heart to the ministry that God gave you, you will never be happy. Mm. Right. Amen. You know, like, like the line that when I run, I feel God's pleasure. Right. For me, I love teaching. I, I, I just, I love teaching. And that's what makes me happy. You know, and I remember about 15 years ago, I decided that I'm going to devote my energy, because that's what I always wanted to do anyway, I'd love to do. I mean, it's one of those things when nobody, you know, for years, not a whole lot of teaching even happening, I didn't care. I would read books and all this sort of stuff. But at some point I said, I'm going to... I'm going to have a teaching ministry. I remember I, I was writing my first book. I was getting ready to publish it. And I got, you know, I mentioned it to one of the leaders there where we were. I won't say his name. And he said, who asked you to write that book? Talk about oh. 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 Talk about Talk about <laughs> By the way, that doesn't mean, seriously, that is so far. I bring that up. That is so far behind us. Yeah. We are so not that anymore. Right. Praise God for that. <laughs> you know what I did to that brother? <laughs> Amen. I didn't listen. Amen. Because if you're not using your gift to serve the Lord, Amen. you're sinning. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Don't wait to be asked. Amen. Come on. Come on. And so, you know, I started doing that stuff. And, and you know, again, like I said, I, I wasn't waiting for permission. And Amen. I'm telling you, I have the most ridiculously blessed life. I, I, I can't even... I can't even explain it, you know. I was hanging with my old, like, worldly friends. I don't do that very often. I haven't hung with them for about 18 years. But I get to share my life, and not to be boastful, but they're like, wow, you know. But amen. Amen. Right. That's amen. what it should be. Sure. Yeah. Amen. You know, I, I, those, you guys, you empty nesters, and I, are those who are going to be. Oh, man. Now, now, that's the greatest time, you know. Because when you're young, you had... Time but no money, <laughs> right? And then you're, you know, 25 to 45 or 50, you might have some money, but yeah, no time. Amen. But now, man, I'm free. I mean, I don't, you know, have to, you know, worry about you know, my kids, whether they're going to get fed when I'm not around, you know? So, man, Amen. now's the time. And we're planning. We're going to go to a foreign country. We're going to build up this ministry. And whatever your thing is, Man, you need to plan big. Amen. Building the house of the Lord. On, Don't be pulling paneling. What, what do you want paneling on your house for? Is that going to make you happy? Yeah. Mm. Your 401k is going to turn into a 201k anyway. <laughs> it already did. Boy, that, that, really, you know, that really fulfilled you. Mm. I mean, what are you saving money for? Right. It's to spend it serving the Lord. Right. Wow. You know, I, I don't have a goal to leave money to my kids. <laughs> <And I'll... laughs> Amen. At the end of my life, I hope I've burned out as nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 